Okay, let's start. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of Consolidon. Uh, we are a new age consulting firm powered by a digital platform. Uh, Connected Insights is a web summit that we do a few times a year. Uh, we call in thought leaders from various different uh, walks of life to talk about their area of expertise, share their knowledge with all of you. Um, today is day two of a two-day summit. Uh, this is the first talk of day two. Uh, today's talk is by uh, Deepak from Alia Consulting. Um, if you have any questions during uh, the presentation, feel free to type them out on chat. Uh, feel free to use the raise hand option on Zoom if you want to ask a question uh, and we will unmute you uh, to allow you to ask the question. Uh, during the uh, presentation, please do stay on mute so that there are no background noises. That's about it from me. Uh, over to you, Deepak, and looking forward to your presentation. Thank you so much, Varun. And thank you to the Consolidon team for setting this up. Um, and thank you to all the participants for joining. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about professional um, screening of the senior uh, teams that join companies and, and their role and the implications and, and maybe some hints and tips that may help you as you do your own work. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just start uh, with a quick introduction about our firm. It's called Alia Consulting. Alia mean is the actually the Latin word for risk, so it's it is risk consulting, but then obviously a name that that remains unique. Um, I'll um, sorry, I'll just okay. So that's our our topic today. Um, we do when we talk about comprehensive background, it's, it's sometimes call it people call it BGV, some people call it just a background check, some uh, some. You know, the, the fact is that you when you're looking at it from a candidate or a hiring point of view, you would normally default to just saying a background check. But then uh, as the world has changed, as in the investment community has become more focused on uh, hiring senior professionals into their portfolio companies, there's independent directors, board directors, and others that, that get hired, you, you can't really call them candidates. So I think that's that's one distinction that I do want to make is we're not talking about mass hiring and, and we're not talking about junior staff. We're talking about the senior professionals uh, who have a significant role in the organization that they join. So, so it's called a sort of forensic on the person and investigation on the person, uh, background checks, background screening. So it's a whole combination of things that are uh, said and done, but they all pretty much boil down to the same set of work that needs to be done. Um, just to quickly tell you um, about uh, ourselves, we've, uh, I've actually been doing this work for 34 years now, worked for 10 years in London, 10 years in Hong Kong. It's been about with overlaps about 25 years in India. And of course, we, we cover many, many countries uh, doing similar work of background checks, but you have to respect the laws of each country when you do the background check. So I'll, I'll uh, come back and, and explain a bit more about that. Now, as a company, the reason um, as things developed for us, we were, we were doing a lot of the mergers and acquisition work for clients. Uh, and obviously every company that a uh, private equity fund or a hedge fund or, or a LP wants to invest in uh, comprises of people, which are, let's say the, the main promoter family, the directors and the key managerial personnel, the KMPs. Um, so you have to look at them. So, so by, by virtue of that work, it was that specialization has been with us right from the beginning of looking at people in their different capacities and roles. Uh, and, and of course, that expands out when we only need to look at a specific individual. So um, in coming straight to the point about uh, doing the senior professional screening, uh, one of the big questions, of course, is why? Um, you, you know, a, a person, what you do have to check every single time is, is, to, is to ensure that they are not bringing any baggage with them that could impact the reputation of your company. That's actually the first part. Now, that baggage could be a number of issues, uh, which is conflict, and I'll talk about that more. There could be compliance issues in their past, um, they could have some kind of criminal record, which in some countries, 
does not allow them to become directors of companies. So they, they're kind of uh, not authorized or not legally allowed to be the company directors. Um, there's a, a level of educational validation. So when it's being done for junior people, there's a message sent to the university and a quick sort of check done. Uh, but if the person that you're hiring is a senior professional, they would at some point be listed on the alumni or recognized by their uh, educational institution, which sometimes is enough to validate the process because you could be waiting for two months for a response to come. Um, political affiliations, uh, they can be positive also, but they can be negative or seen as negative. So understanding them, knowing them uh, are what is an integral part of uh, doing the background study on the senior professional. Now, other social and media connections, those are uh, a combination of, there are certain rules in Europe which limit and obviate against uh, studying their, their uh, social media, but it doesn't mean you can't use it to validate uh, the information that you're looking at just to make sure that you are doing a background check on the right person. So it's about how you use the information that's out there and, and how you interpret it. So um, looking, given that, uh, given the seriousness of the role uh, of that senior professional, um, you know, there, there have been many studies that I've seen over the last, I'd say even 15 to 20 years uh, that have been done by different companies in different parts of the world. And the constant theme that they have is somebody uh, as the most default, this is not 100%, of course, uh, but the bulk of the people against whom legal action was taken or were identified by management as being involved in, in some kind of malfeasance or fraud uh, was mid 30s to mid 40s, uh, having a senior position. So you don't have to be a board director to have the authority to do what you need to do. Uh, and of course, it would be people who worked in the system for, for a long time. It could be six, eight, five, six, eight, 10, 12, 15 years. Um, so they know how the company works. They've grown with the company. They've seen it expand. They may have their own little fiefdom. Um, and I'll, I'll come around to that. And yes, these people have large salaries. Uh, that number is correct. It is uh, a lot of people that have been seen doing this have a salary of US dollars, 20,000 US a month and more. Um, and, and their motivation or what they end up doing are, are frauds that are huge and can cripple the organization um, along with the reputation if it came out that these were the issues that happened. So I will talk to you about specific examples, real examples of things that we worked on, but um, uh, it, three buckets are what you could see. One is just a sort of, you know, stealing the assets of the company. Now, that's not just thinking about a stapler or something. It is, there's laptops, there's computers, there's more expensive equipment, and, and it could happen uh, frequently also. Um, and, and some others could be doing the misappropriation by using the company assets for, let's say, a production line that runs for three hours at night when everybody's supposed to be at home and, and the product being made is sent out to the counterfeit market. Um, so things could be um, as extreme as that. And, and, and by the way, that's a real example also. Uh, systemic fraud is about uh, coming into working with vendors, representing yourself as a vendor, uh, and, and more sort of uh, things that are done on a regular basis, um, maybe in collusion with other people in the organization. And theft or trade secrets, of course, you know, people learn a certain proprietary process. There's in today's world, there's obviously all the computer source code. Uh, there are uh, certain processes that are developed which are unique to an organization because of its dependent on tech, uh, dependence on technology. Um, so uh, that information or that process, um, uh, right down to let's say the design of a tire tread, are um, trade secrets, and and those have to be protected, and they can be stolen by people who then go off and set up their own company and start doing the same manufacturing the same product. Okay, um, so um, the whole process of hiring somebody at a senior level uh, is expensive. And um, some of you I'm sure have experienced, had discussions with uh, some of the larger uh, headhunting and recruitment firms around the world. Uh, and their fees can be high. 
because they are not downloading a bunch of CVs and just forwarding it to you. They are actually uh, taking the criteria, understanding the job description, and then identifying appropriate people for you, which is a lot of time. Uh, you know, these processes can run three months, six months, even up to one year. Um, why it becomes more important when you have, let's say, a headhunting firm doing the, their process. Uh, yes, they spend a lot of time identifying people. Yes, they do talk to people um, and they get an understanding of the, the professionalism and the level of the person. But that's asking the person, talking to the person, which is what many of us do on our normal hires too. Uh, we talk to the person, we talk to their references, and we, we develop a sort of understanding of, of best fit for the organization. But at a senior level, it's not enough. You have to have some way of checking deeper independently because of the person's, the amount of authority and accountability and responsibility that you will be giving to that person. Um, and these are consequences. So you kind of have to work backward. Are you willing to say that, if this person commits fraud, my company's reputation in, let's say, if it's a branch of a company also, that branch could be impacted negatively. Um, they, uh, you know, once people remember uh, that this, there's a negative negativity associated with the organization, they do remember it for quite a while. So it would lead to a loss of business. If the regulators get involved, if it's a bank employee who's done some kind of fraud. We, we all know stories about that. There's enough in the media over the years from all over the world. That there's fines to be paid, which, which don't justify the, 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 the expense that you would take to in the hiring process to, to make sure that you don't get into that situation where those fines hit you. Um, and of course, with listed companies, uh, there, there's an immediate impact on share price and, and Sometimes it doesn't even need a fraud. There's, there's, there could be any kind of announcements which, which are seen negatively by the market, but, but certainly fraud becomes a, a major negative perception of the organization. Uh, we've seen situations with listed companies where you've got people on three-year contracts and those contracts are ending and they decide to move on or those contracts are not renewed. Uh, but the market certainly gets a perception that maybe something's wrong because you know, four or five of the senior management team have left. So, uh, so all of this has to be handled very, very sensitively. Right. So when we, uh, what we do is we try and talk to people that are provided by the, uh, the target individual, or the senior professional, and we also develop sources to speak to them. Uh, now, there, there is a, in some countries, you're allowed to talk to people. In other countries, you have to have written permission from them, where they allow you to do that thorough background check and provide you with the references and all their details. Um, so respecting the laws, understanding the, the, the location or the jurisdiction where the person is or was based is very important before you launch the background check. Okay, um, Talking to people tells you a lot. Uh, whether they are more sales oriented, whether they are more team players and focused on getting the work done. Uh, so are they sellers or doers? Um, do they roll up their sleeves? Do they have enough experience? Did they actually achieve those multi-million dollar targets that they're claiming in their CV or in their profile? Uh, there are ways to assess the, the, the numbers. It's, it's not possible to get the, the actual numbers legally. But the fact is that there are ways you can assess those numbers uh, in, a, in a more uh, focused manner, which should fit in with many different aspects of the individual that you're looking at. Okay, so um, let's, uh, this is just some articles that we've picked up in, in the news from around the world. Um, as you can see, it's not, it's a very common problem. Uh, and the cleanup in the, of the mess after that is, is, a, is a far bigger problem along with all of this. And a lot of this, the bulk of it can be avoided by doing an appropriate and thorough background check on that person, on that senior professional. Okay. So um, one of the reasons why we started this service 18 years ago, dedicated as a senior professional screening service, uh, was because we realized that in many of the Asian countries, if you've got 
if you paid attention to and made sure that your senior management, branch management, the board level people are of a certain ethic and integrity and reputation, um, which is the way they are as human beings, as individuals, as professionals, you get the next layer and the layer down, maintaining that level of integrity. So it's very easy, especially in Asia and, and uh, other parts of the world where you can turn around and say, hey, you know, that, that branch manager or the senior here is a thief. So if I steal, what's the big deal? So it, it's the, the character and the integrity of that senior professional drives how the whole organization thinks, moves and works going forward. Um, and obviously a company that's you know, completely involved in fraud will, will never succeed. Um, so what, what's happened over time is that we've been looking at company directors, the board members, operating partners is something that's come up in the last four years where people are, uh, the, the bigger funds, the investors have looked at individuals who have, may even have worked with them or in other uh, funds. So they understand how the fund works and how the, the investors view the organization, but they've got the practical experience to be uh, an acting CEO or active CEO for that organization uh, to, to build up that business. So those, uh, and believe me, there's very, very few people uh, who have the experience of the organization and the investor at the same time as a professional. So, so those people are, are even more important because it's about turning the company around and growing it. Uh, KMPs is a, is a term just used for the uh, key managerial personnel. So these people are ne not necessarily shareholders or directors. So their name doesn't come up anywhere. Uh, but they're just that one level below where they have equal responsibility and authority. So, so they are seen as the driving force of the company and are able to make the big decisions, but not have their name associated with it. Uh, so that level of people is something that does require a deeper dive and a deeper understanding of their uh, ethics and integrity. Uh, the IT head, um, now we have been seeing a, a surge in that. There are IT um, people who have, let's call it this way, as some of you will know, it's the super admin passwords which means they can do anything in the organization that they want with the, with the data and with the emails. Um, we've investigated in the last year, I would say we've investigated a couple of uh, super uh, administrators, <coughs> sorry, who've, um, who've kind of worked with one side of the management team to transfer the data or uh, allow the system to copy every email that comes in to the other person and then and not leave a trace because all the logs are in their hand. So while, while you may say, okay, it's just my IT person, but the fact is it's data and it's critical and it's important that your IT head also be subject to a um, deep background check along with obviously other proactive measures that you need to ensure that that one password doesn't uh, get misused. So um, branch managers, senior professionals, uh, people who are the head of admin, the head of procurement, who are dealing with all the vendors. Um, I'll come to a couple of examples. They're all important for the organization and have the authority or power to take a kickback, take a bribe, do something that is detrimental to the reputation of the organization. Right. Um, so what, what we've done over time is developed a process. Uh, where, of course, we, like we told you, we, it's, it's a balance between doing a number of checks. The checks are the, obviously the standard, um, what, you, what most people feel is just you just need to push a button and the report comes out. That's not entirely true. There's a, there's a limit to what information you get when you, when you do a 24, 48-hour report. But if you want to really study the person and do the all possible regulatory enforcement, compliance, blacklist, sanctions, uh, all of those checks, uh, it, it does take time. It has to be done thoroughly and properly um, along with the litigation checks. But what, where, the, where part of that value comes in of doing a, a senior professional background check is understanding who they are, 
where they've been based, who are their family members, do the family members have any businesses that could potentially be in conflict with your business? Because it's not necessary for people to just set up a company in their own name. Um, they can do it through family members. And we've, we've seen people do it through their chartered accounting uh, firms and the networks there that they have uh, what they call study circles because everyone wants to save tax, but then those uh, channels are then used for uh, malfeasance and fraud also. So, so that's where um, the, the sort of undisclosed activities comes forward because they just say, hey, I'm not doing it. It's in the family. Why do I need to disclose it? Um, but it is a conflict issue at a senior level. So adverse media think that anybody can find by doing a search on the person. Those need to be checked out. They need to be understood and seen in the right context. And their social media status is uh, to be considered from the view of uh, if you're hiring somebody, let's say for business development and they are not even on LinkedIn uh, or Facebook or, or any of the social media channels, so then you kind of wonder, is that the right person for me? Because the, you need them to be out there and active and, and identified. Um, so so those, those things become important over time. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so in that whole senior employee uh, and senior professional check, it's not just before, but while the person's there, you need to make sure you've got all the checks and balances that are needed. Um, and if there is a change in the person's lifestyle, they certainly, you know, they've, you've heard that they bought a couple of apartments and you're wondering, there's no big windfall from the family or, or some um, lottery that they've won. So then where is that money coming from? So those are early warning signals that you need to look at. You do need to have a, a complaint box where whistleblowers can uh, give their messages or an email system. People who don't take vacations, that can be of concern, especially in the finance department, uh, because there's no way of knowing how much are they handling and how much what could fall um, uh, through the cracks if they were unavailable for a while with, let's say, a medical emergency or something. So. So the, all those sort of balances uh, have to be done um, to, to make sure that you're keeping an eye on how things are going. There are signs of collusion, people being hired from the same school or same college, from the same community, from the same state. Um, they, a, a company department should not have everybody from the same background because their loyalties would then be divided and they may end up doing things that they don't even know, which is inadvertently supporting some kind of fraud happening in the company by the senior people. And, and they may not just speak up about it. So, so all of these measures are important. And, and uh, yes, this is what you can do uh, when you've hired the senior professional, but then these are areas that we try and identify when we're doing the background check to see how they were operating in their previous organization and whether any of these issues came up there because the same patterns may then follow in your organization. So we've, we've spent some time writing articles, doing some stuff about explaining to uh, the, the, what we call thought leadership pieces to explain about uh, things that happen with, with employee fraud. So it's, it's something that we've been invested in and, and do our best to like this webinar also, uh, try and help in communicating uh, what to watch out for, things things that may be of concern, um, so that, uh, you know, reducing that uh, employee fraud then helps the organization grow, which creates jobs, which is good for the economy. So it's like a vicious circle. It may be a drop in the ocean, but it does make a difference. We've also um, set up um, a KYC AML check process, which is at least a quick red flag check. Um, we, we are developing this, it's, it's semi-active at the moment. Um, and if anybody of you need any information on this, you can contact us separately through Consolidon or directly. Uh, we, we will remain in touch for that. Um, now, um, coming back to some of the actual stories. Um, now, here's two case studies. 
Uh, we have some of them on our website, which you can look at at your leisure. Uh, but but just to explain one of the stories. So we uh, what we walked through uh, was that the client reached out to us, said we've hired, we've got this guy. He's been working with us for a few years. He's dealing with vendors, and you'll see these two case studies are actually related, but they're two separate individuals and 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 issues that happened, but connected. Um. So this, this vendor that was supplying to the company was about an hour and a half drive away from where the client's office was, uh, where people were sort of coming in and out with their samples, with the vans going up and down. And um, we, the, within the industry, there was a whistleblower complaint saying um, that there's some favoritism going on, some possible illegal transactions, possibly kickbacks. And, Unfortunately, what we've seen is when, when we do have some of these complaints, they kind of throw every allegation possible towards that person, whereas it may only be one thing, but they feel that if they say five more things anonymously, maybe it'll be taken more seriously. However, most international firms would take a single complaint also seriously, simply because it is a reputation issue. So not, not the severity or the volume, but the, but the issue in itself. So we, <clears throat> sorry. So we, we did the study, the whole background check on the person. We looked at the vendors. Um, and then because it was a client employee, we interviewed them and we did a digital forensic on their computers also. So it was the whole uh, package of looking at evidence. Now, what we, what we did was uh, in, in that whole study, uh, we identified one old CV, some, uh, some um, communications, uh, both on WhatsApp through the phone, digital forensic and on emails, all of which pointed out to a lean to towards a specific vendor. So, uh, which was kind of understandable because they did have a good product. They were doing a good job. So you, you could see that it was potentially see it as being in the best interest of the, of the client. Um, but the fact was that this person had worked in that company about eight, nine years ago, and they had not disclosed it. And it was only for about six months, but they were actually fully employed there. And this was not disclosed at all. Um, and that was enough to um, have that bias or, un, uh, you know, feel that there is a bias and there is a link, which was undisclosed. And that was grounds for termination. So, um, Small things are, are, you know, can turn into sort of bigger issues. It's, it's always something of concern. Um, if I had to categorize some of that stuff, so you can look at issues uh, as being of concern as small as uh, an exaggeration in the CV, uh, a gap in the CV uh, or an undisclosed uh, employment in the CV, but they do come out. If, if the background checks are done thoroughly and properly, they do come out. Um, taking bribes, taking gifts during the festival season for any function, those are an absolute no-no. Uh, most companies have, uh, you know, some, some companies have said, okay, something up to $10 is okay. Um, but most companies have a more stricter rule where they say, you know, ideally tell everybody who supplies to them, any vendor, any consultant saying, please don't do it at all. If it is being done, um, they, they need full disclosure and the recipient of the company should be sending an email to their reporting manager and telling them that, that they've received this and asking what to do with it. So if it's like a box of sweets or something, then it can be shared within the company, but, but certainly not taken home. Um, so, so building those grades up and controls are, are just as important because as you hire people, as you grow, uh, having some of these internal controls helps to mitigate uh, potential fraud. Then, um, you know, we, we did see a situation where employees of a company working with the employees of our client company on a sort of active basis um, were um, helping each other out uh, with personal favors. So, for example, the guy would say, oh, yeah, you know, you've got uh, your cars coming into town. Could you pick up my family and, and bring them? Now, 
this, the vendor may see it as no cost. Uh, this individual will say, okay, I've saved time. But the fact is that it's a completely unethical thing to do because you are saving personal money. So you're not taking it. <coughs> Sorry. You're not taking money. You're not taking a bribe, but then you're saving your disposable income. Uh, two sides of a coin. So just as critical to make sure that those kind of things are not being done while the other side says, yeah, it's not a big deal. The car's going anyway. Um, you, you have to tell people not to be flippant about these things. It's important and, and build that integrity through and through so that no personal favors are being done. Or if there is, of course, if, if, a, if there's any assistance given during a medical emergency and it, it should just be informed and that's, that's okay too. So um, last couple of items I just wanted to run by you is, you know, we, we've done background checks on very senior board level people who were being elevated uh, to chairman level. Um, one incident we had happened, which was very interesting, was that the person was identified as being a credit defaulter from five years uh, previously. They were a director of a company that had financial issues. They'd left the company. But because they were directors and named on the documents, the, the, the recovery case was filed against all of the directors. It was sorted out. It was in the background. But this individual did not even know that their name had been blacklisted there or, or listed there uh, as a potential defaulter. So when we did that background check, because it was shared with the subject, um, it was a big surprise to them. And then, of course, the legal team of that organization worked with them to ensure that that record was cleared out because it was uh, after their departure from the organization. Um, so things like that could have then uh, made the regulator say, uh, sorry, and not give a reason and just say rejected. Um, so doing those background checks become very important. Uh, we did have an anecdotal incident where, where we had done a report for a senior professional of a listed company in India. They did see the report. Um, and uh, I had a conversation with them and they, they actually said that they enjoyed reading it because there were things about their past that they had actually forgotten. And when that report came and they saw it, they brought back good memories. Uh, so not all, all things are negative, but then Having those reports uh, positively with yourself uh, gives you that confidence to give that person more authority, more responsibility, uh, which leads to the success of the organization. Right, so, so um, I hope that discussion was helpful to you. I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, uh, Varun, I'm, uh, you know, anything that you have which you want to bounce off me, I'm happy to help answer. So thanks uh, so much for that, Deepa. Uh, quite uh, enlightening. Every time I speak with you, I learn a few new new things. So thanks for that. Uh, audience, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to, you can even unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, it would be absolutely fine. Or you can type out the question. And if not, uh, you can always, uh, you know, uh, Kanika or Alvin will uh, post uh, Deepak's email on the chat. Uh, so you can reach out to Deepak directly. I will post my email so that you can reach out to me directly if required. Thank you for those of you who were attending on LinkedIn Live as well. That's my email address. If anyone has any comments as well, feel free to make the comments. It doesn't have to be a question. And uh, if I have, I have a question. Uh, thank you. It's very interesting and uh, valuable presentation of uh, what you do. Uh, how much time usually it takes uh, to do this due diligence to make risk, risk assessment when you want to hire a senior? So normally it's about two to three weeks. To, to get the report and your opinion about uh, whether we can go ahead or we can. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah, three weeks normally is, is sufficient, yes. Uh, 
Perfect. If any other questions or uh, comments, we can answer those. If not, uh, we would look forward to see you in the next couple of events that we have. Uh, there is uh, there is a question, Deepak, which you can quickly answer. Um, it's uh, Ali Farooqi is asking, what is the source of your data, right? What is the source of, I'm assuming also the checks that you do, right? Yes. Uh, no, thank you for that. So uh, this, while people assume we can just do a quick Google search, but Google only covers about 20% 20, 20 of what's out there on the web. Uh, we, so what we've done is we, we try and go to every single regulatory body that would keep in public information publicly on an individual. We also go to the aggregators and we also have access to subscriber databases, uh, which store the appropriate information. Uh, there's corporate filings, there's a lot to be downloaded and cross-checked. We find two dates of birth, two, uh, two registration numbers, two electoral numbers, um, things that are compliance issues, all of those need to be known and sorted out. <clears throat> but largely, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a huge amount of desktop research with a lot of cross-matching, uh, both domestic and international. So all the global sanctions, OFAC, uh, political exposed databases, all of them are checked every single time. And we are actually ISO certified as a company to do that. Yeah, thank you very much, Deepak. So if I understand correctly, you guys are only accessing the publicly available data, right? These sanctions no, and everything uh, are only the publicly available data. No, that's the first part. Um, it's, it's public, but it's also subscriber. The second part is about talking to people. Okay. So there is secondary and primary both. There is another question. Does psychometric test helps in background check? Um, I've had some experience with that. Uh, I think it's a good tool to have. Um, it's certainly worth doing. It tells you a little more about the personality of the individual. Um, but I wouldn't go only uh, by the by the test because it's a matching of the profiles. Um, I have seen interesting results. They, there is a, a generic uh, default that comes out quite, uh, quite closely matching the, the individual, uh, but to have it still backed up by the appropriate data, the factual checks, along with um, talking to people who have dealt with them actively in the past and, and currently, uh, then I think you've got a much better and a good picture. I hope that helps. Absolutely. Thank you for that, uh, Deepak. Now, uh, is there a question from Manju? Is that right? Or Yes, yes. Sure, go ahead, please. You have talked about bias. So there are two things. When it, there is sometimes there is undisclosed bias, and the person themselves doesn't doesn't know that they have bias. And other times, it may be because of their culture. So how can one differentiate that the bias is conscious or unconscious? And should we give different weights to that? Well, I think every human being gets molded in, in their different environment. You know, the school you go, the college you go, the where you work, uh, how much exposure you have. Um, as long as it's a healthy bias, it's, it's okay. Uh, but then some people can have extreme views. Some of those extreme views can be, um, you know, do get identified in the way that people have treated people that they've worked with in the past. Uh, and I think that that can probably give you a better reflection of um, uh, the, the, the person's uh, interpersonal relationships. Yeah. So the best, best option is to talk to as many people as you can about the person. Yes, sir. That uh, actually defines the culture of organization from yes. inside. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Perfect. And I see that you're in a very nice place. You're out for your morning walk while listening to this call. Excellent. Sir, I live at this place. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so one thing I'd like to do before we close out, if, if possible, is if uh, everyone who's okay to switch on their videos, just switch on their videos for a minute. Uh, we'll just take a quick photo uh, for social media. Uh, and then we will close out. Perfect. Thank you for everyone who's switching on their videos. You can fix your hair while I, uh, while others, <laughs> uh, while others switch on their videos, and then we will take a quick photo, and then we'll be out. Perfect. So I'm going to give it one. Okay, just give it a second more. Then, okay, one, two, three. Background checks. Okay, I've got the photo. Thank you so much, everyone.